everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on Asta, lead researcher, serial buyer, and fur mom to the best doggo in the universe. In this video, we'll talk about her kit and traces, idolons, relic builds, light cones, energy and rotation tips, and team synergies to help you unlock her incredible support potential. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get into it. Hi, the name's Asta. I'm the lead researcher on her to space station. Asta is a free 4-star Harmony fire unit that primarily supports your team with attack and speed buffs while also having amazing breaking potential. We'll go through her kit and traces to understand what her abilities do and how to properly utilize them. Let's start with her talent's attack buffing mechanics. Asta can gain one charging stack for every unique enemy hit by her attacks. Each stack gives a team-wide attack buff and you can get up to 5 max stacks. Additionally, when she hits an enemy with a fire weakness, she gains 2 stacks instead. So ideally, you want to be up against a mob composed of some, or even entirely, fire weak enemies to maximize her stacking potential. Note that this attack buff does not scale on Asta's own attack stat. Rather, it's a percent bonus that will scale on each individual unit's base attack stat and leveling up her talent increases the percent multiplier. The stacks will decay over time too, since at the start of Asta's turn she loses 3 stacks, so a huge part of her gameplay consists of stacking and refreshing her attack buff every turn. This also means that unlike some buffs which are dependent on the buffed unit's turn, Asta's attack buff is entirely dependent on her own cycle, so your teammates can take as many turns as they want without worry of rapidly consuming the attack buff. Anyway, Asta has two means of gaining stacks, her skill and basic attack. Casting Asta's skill does 5 instances of fire damage that randomly targets enemies. Its multi-hit nature makes it incredible for shredding fire weak toughness, especially when all hits target a solo enemy. But remember that targeting only one enemy limits your stacking potential since you're not hitting different unique enemies. However, when you're up against multiple enemies, the random targeting can make breaking multiple fire weak enemies more dependent on chance. But at least you also have the potential to accumulate more charging stacks. Either way, there will be trade-offs depending on the combat scenario. Scenario. Additionally, because of her skill's amazing breaking capabilities, one cheap yet effective way to make her contribute good damage even as a support is by building break effect on her. This will be covered more in the build section. Another way to get stacks and deal damage is through Asta's basic attack. It's a single target fire hit, so its stacking utility is quite limited. However, when you unlock her Ascension 2 ability, it gains a chance to burn enemies for 3 turns, granting her some added damage over time offensive utility. There are notable advantages to using Asta's skill, as it has more stacking potential against multiple enemies, it generates more energy, and it breaks toughness faster. However, there can still be instances where using her basic attack will be preferable, which include but are not limited to to the following. Anyway, I'll discuss more about Asta's skill and basic attack rotation options in a later section. Along with her attack buff, we have her ultimate speed buff. Casting it gives a huge flat speed bonus for 2 turns to your entire party. Increasing speed provides numerous general benefits such as hitting speed breakpoints, faster turn frequency, getting more actions in before the enemy's turn, and many other various advantages depending on the unit. If you find that it's hard to farm pieces and build optimal speed on your units right now, Asta can cover that shortcoming in the meantime. And even with already good baseline speed on her teammates, buffing their speed more still results in hitting higher speed breakpoints. Asta's ultimate costs 120 energy, and another part of her gameplay is filling that up quickly and efficiently since keeping Asta's speed buff frequently active is key to maximizing her support utility. Note as well that unlike her charging stacks, which depend on Asta's turns, her ultimate's buff duration depends on each individual units turns, which is how usual buffs work anyway, hence why you want to maximize her ultimate frequency. Then for her technique, she can initiate a battle to deal fire damage and reduce fire weak toughness. This also counts towards activating her charging stacks, so she can start the battle with some or even full stacks depending on the enemy mob. If you have the points to spare for that, then it's a good way to immediately buff your team and start breaking the enemy. Just consider first if your other teammates might have techniques worth prioritizing instead. Note that if she has any equipment like certain light cones that give energy upon attacking, or the thief set which gives energy upon breaking enemies, those can also trigger by using her technique. Now let's check out Asta's Ascension bonus abilities and stat bonus traces. As stated before, her Ascension 2 ability gives her basic attack a chance to burn the enemy for 3 turns, which is some added offense and more potential synergy and damage over time teams. In rotations that incorporate a basic attack, then at least it can offer more utility. Then her Ascension 4 ability increases all allies' fire damage by 18% when Asta is active. Naturally, this will have its best use case if you comp her with another fire DPS or a fire-focused 
self-esteem. However, if you don't fall under those cases, then this is a low unlock priority. And her Ascension 6 ability makes As to get 6% defense for every charging stack she has. While very simple, it's still appreciated to help increase her survivability. As for her stat bonus traces, they're actually quite interesting. She has defense bonuses, but she also has crit rate and fire damage bonus stats. And it makes you think if we're being led to build her as an attack crit damage bonus DPS. I'll explain in the build section that it is technically possible, but not necessarily the most efficient or recommended build route. For her traces leveling priority, focus on her talent and ultimate, which are her main buff sources, followed by her skill. Her basic attack will be the lowest priority. Her A2 and A4 abilities are situationally beneficial. Level them up if you have the materials to spare and plan to utilize them or want access to the stat bonuses. The A6 ability is quite useful for survivability, but not super urgent to unlock if you have other resource priorities. All in all, Asta is very functional at C0, but her idolons all have surprisingly good value that make her support mechanics much more convenient to manage. Let's take a look. E1 lets her skill hit one more time. This results in better breaking capabilities, a bit more damage, and an extra chance to get another charging stack. But another interesting bonus is that the extra hit makes her skill generate 6 more energy, which the description doesn't explicitly say, but this further improves her energy regeneration. E2 makes her charging stacks not get reduced after using her ultimate, making it overall easier to maintain a higher average number of stacks throughout the battle, which can have an impact on the flexibility of her attack rotations. E3 increases her skill and talent levels, which you mainly want for the attack bonus increase. E4 increases her energy regeneration rate by 15% if she has at least two charging stacks. This is a valuable boost to help her maximize her energy generation and speed buff uptime. You will generally have at least two stacks in most battles anyway, so this will stay on for the most part. Just note that unless you use Asta's technique to initiate a battle, this won't be activated during her first turn. E5 increases her ultimate and basic attack levels for a higher speed bonus, and E6 slows down her attack buff decay by reducing the charge stacks lost per turn by 1. Together with her previous idolons, E6 is the icing on the cake to make stack management on Asta way easier. Now on to Asta's build, starting with her relics. There's a lot to discuss here since there are a surprising number of considerations when optimizing her build. First of all, we want to consider how to keep Asta alive. After all, a dead support means no support. Asta's own speed and energy generation are just as important as well for maximizing her ultimate uptime. Then you might also start thinking of ways to improve her damage output even as a support. Let's do it step by step. With her relic stats, let's start with what I recommend as a cheap default build that offers high survivability and lets Asta more safely do her main support functions. For the body piece, it's either HP or defense, likely whichever has better substats. For the feet piece, you want speed. You might think that speed makes her charging stacks require refreshing sooner, but that comes with the benefit of having energy generation, more breaking opportunities, and better ultimate uptime, which are all important. The planar sphere will also go for either HP or defense again. And for the link rope, you really want energy regeneration rate or ERR. Combining an ERR rope with other energy boosting sources like certain light cones and her idolons will help her get closer to achieving more consistent and even possibly permanent uptime on her ultimate buff. For her substats, you're mainly looking for speed, defense, and HP. Effect resistance is also not bad to reduce the chances of her being disabled. So you can see that this is geared towards keeping her alive and maximizing her support role. But now we can start considering other main stats and substats that can add to her damage. There are two routes to increase her damage output. One is by getting attack, crit, and damage bonus stats. However, we all know the pain of farming good pieces with these stats, and that's a lot of stats to look for and juggle with other survival stats. So the other route is instead going for break effect. Break effect will boost Asta's break damage and the burn damage over time that comes from her breaking the enemy. And since Asta's skill has great breaking capabilities, then it seems to synergize well with her already. However, all Always remember that break effect has a very simple condition slash limitation. If Asta doesn't deal the breaking hit to the enemy, break effect literally does nothing. It's easier to guarantee that Asta will break the small fry enemies with low toughness bars, but when you're up against bosses with huge toughness bars, that's harder to guarantee. Sometimes it's Asta breaking, sometimes it isn't. But regardless, it's still one efficient way of just boosting her damage contribution since it's just one extra stat. Just keep in mind what its limitations are. If you pick up some break effect 
like stats on her substats, then that's great. But generally speaking, it isn't worth trading an ERR rope for a break effect rope. The advantages of an ERR link rope far outweigh break effect in the long run. It can be a bit more viable if you have her E4 and or an energy giving light cone, but ultimately I'd still recommend an ERR rope in all cases. You might also be wondering, what if I focus on attack or crit stats on her main stats? Like using an attack or crit rate body piece instead, or fire damage bonus for her planar sphere, or get them as substats? Technically, you most certainly can. What you have to consider is the trade-off, which is survivability versus offense. For instance, you could use a crit or attack body piece instead, or a fire damage bonus planar sphere. At the end of the day, if you're willing to risk as to survival in exchange for more damage output, then that's entirely up to what you're comfortable with. After those stat considerations, what about her relic sets? There are two main recommendations for full sets, the 4-piece Musketeer of Wild Wheat and the 4-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor. What you mainly want from the Musketeer set is its 6% speed bonus, as the speed bonus can help Asta hit even higher speed breakpoints. On the other hand, the Thief set gives a lot of break effect stats and 3 energy whenever Asta breaks an enemy. The 6% bonus of Musketeer translates to 6 speed added on Asta's 106 base speed. If you manage to get 6 speed or more from substats on a Thief set, then that at least neutralizes the speed gap between the Musketeer. Substat quality will be a huge consideration, plus whatever your available pieces are. At least both are frequent chest and objective rewards, so you'll have plenty to choose from. You might also be eyeing the 4-piece Firesmith of Lava Forging. It offers the highest non-break damage potential among the previous options thanks to its multiple damage bonuses, and it can close the speed gap versus the Musketeer set depending on substats. However, farming the Firesmith Cavern specifically for Asa is quite inefficient. It might be possible if you're farming for other characters as well, like Welt or Hook, and Asa can just take leftovers. Alternatively, and more efficiently, you can just mix and match among two-piece sets with really good subsets. Then for Asta's planar ornament set, the Fleet of the Ageless is the top recommendation. The HP bonus helps survivability and the 8% team-wide attack bonus will be permanently on with leveled up speed boots. A second but not as recommended alternative is the Talia Kingdom of Banditry set. This gives a default break effect bonus but with 145 speed, it gives a further break effect bonus. That speed requirement is pretty high compared to other sets but thanks to Asta's own speed buff, she can hit it. However, this solely boosts Asta's personal break damage, unlike the fleet's team-wide attack bonus. Another potential option is Sprightly Von Wack, which gives 5% ERR and an advanced forward effect at the start of battle. This can help Asta get ahead at the beginning to activate her buffs and generate energy sooner. However, a fully leveled ERR rope will be generally enough for her energy needs and more so when you get her Eidolons, and the advanced forward effect isn't as useful. So all in all, the team-wide attack bonus of Fleet of the Ageless will be her current top option. Now let's go through her light cone recommendations. Asta has one three-star free-to-play light cone that has amazing value on her, which is the Meshing Cogs light cone, thanks to its energy effect. At S5, it grants the user eight energy per turn upon attacking or getting hit, which can make a lot of difference in reducing the turns needed to fill up her ultimate cost, as I'll show later. Another possible three-star light cone is Chorus, which gives a team-wide attack buff to all allies for the entire battle. But between these, I would recommend Meshing Cogs for energy management and more more efficient rotations. Moving on to the 4-star options, Memories of the Past gives break effect and extra energy when the user attacks per turn, similar to the Meshing Cogs. This is a great 2-in-1 light cone for boosting both her break damage and energy generation. It's somewhat a direct upgrade to the Meshing Cogs light cone, which already has amazing value in the first place, so it'll be harder to get super impositions to match the energy regeneration. Another gotchable 4-star is Dance Dance Dance. This advances the entire team whenever the user casts their ultimate. Combining this with Asta's speed buff will further boost your team's turn rate. A niche option is Planetary Rendezvous, which boosts your entire team's fire damage when equipped on Asta. This is viable when she's comped with fire DPSs like Himiko or Hook, and even fire Trailblazer when he's your defensive unit. As we get more fire teammate options, this light cone will gain more value on Asta. For premium options, Carve the Moon, Weave the Clouds is a battle pass choice. It gives a random team buff every turn which are all useful. It's one of the better BP rewards you can prioritize getting, though not necessarily a must-have or massive upgrade since the previous 3-star and 4-star options are quite competitive already. 
Finally, the 5 star standard light cone, but the battle isn't over, gives the user very high base stats and ERR, has a skill point refunding mechanic, and gives a damage bonus to the ally after Asta's turn. The ERR and skill point refunds are really good effects, but the damage bonus won't always be fully utilized unless you fine tune your team rotation and speed stats to make Asta move right before the desired target ally. Now that we've covered Asta's relic and light cone options, we can go through how you can utilize energy regeneration and bonus energy sources to maximize her ultimate uptime. At E0, without an ERR rope and other energy sources, or very minimal external energy sources, Asta needs a baseline of 4 turns using her skill in order to refill her 120 energy cost. However, this is a highly skill point hungry rotation, so if we introduce a max level ERR rope, we can mitigate the skill point consumption by inserting basic attacks instead. However, this is a 4 turn rotation, and for better ultimate uptime, you may want to reduce recharging rotation to 3 turns. If so, there are different build choices and conditions to implement. The most effective way is using a combination of the following factors. A max level ERR link rope, energy light cones, the thief set, team equipment that provide energy, enemy sources like getting hit or defeating one, or getting her E1 and E4 idolons. Combining these will be generally enough to reduce her ult downtime by at least one turn. These can also help you mix skills and basic attacks if you're going for a skill point neutral playstyle. For example, with an ERR rope and her E1, E1, three skills are all that's needed to guarantee her ultimate is fully recharged. Another example is with a 5 star ERR rope, E1, and an S5 meshing cogs. Here you can afford to do two basic attacks out of three turns and still get enough energy to make her ult ready. Remember, these are but a few examples. Ultimately, your preferred ability rotation and skill point consumption can change depending on other factors, like using your skill more for breaking, trying to conserve skill points, getting external energy sources, and so on. An extreme scenario is making her ultimate ready every two turns. For that, one way to innately do this with her build is using a max leveled 5 star ERR rope, an S4 or S5 meshing cogs or memories of the past, and at least her E4. Let's demonstrate it in action where this Asta has such a build. After using her ultimate, she got back 6 energy. Then we use her skill which now totals her energy to 65. And then we cycle her second turn, use her skill, and we can see that her ultimate is ready to refresh. This lets you achieve full ultimate uptime, but the biggest downside is that it's a skill point hungry rotation, so you'd need to manage your team's skill point usage to accommodate this consistently. But if you're just starting out or are still in your low investment stage, don't be pressured or anxious to strictly optimize these things, especially since getting access to better quality relics, idolons, and light cone options is something that'll come with time and effort. If you want to calculate according to what you have or plan, you can use the wiki reference and math it out according to your ERR and extra energy sources. I'm also linking the energy calculator I use in the description for your own usage. Finally, let's go through some tips and synergies about Asta's teams. As a harmony support that primarily buffs the entire team's attack and speed, lots of teams will really appreciate the benefits they bring, plus her side role as a breaker too. One major starting consideration that will give her a significant advantage is if you're up against fire weak enemies. This lets her get more charging stacks and utilizes her high breaking potential. While she can still definitely work even if you're not dealing with fire weak enemies, that should make you reconsider if an alternative harmony or nihility support unit might be more suitable if they're counter elements to the enemies. You also want to be aware of how she'll consume skill points in your team. Depending on your rotation on her, Asta can be very skill point hungry, in which case you may want to compensate with the skill point positive teammates. Or she can neutralize her own skill point consumption by inserting basic attacks in her rotation which can allow the skill point hungry units to slot in and function more effectively. One aspect about Asta's buffs is that they affect your entire team rather than single target type buffs. So Asta is buffing both your DPS and support units and she can also find good value in teams with multiple damage dealers. While your other harmony units Ting Yun and Bronya may have situationally more potent single target buffs and other support utilities, Asta's team buffs are nonetheless powerful in many scenarios too. Of course, combining Ting Yun or Bronya with Asta is a completely viable option to make them focus on buffing one primary DPS, resulting in a hyper carry team. Pairing her with a Nihility unit instead is also a good choice. With Silverwolf or Pela, they mainly debuff enemy defense in single and multi-target scenarios respectively, among other utilities, which is a good balance to Asta's team attack buff. With Welt, he has powerful slowing mechanics that can complement Asta's huge speed buff. 
Asta also has interesting potential in damage over time teams. DOT teams generally involve multiple DOT appliers, and most DOT effects applied by character abilities scale on attack. So with Asta's team-wide attack buff, that'll bump up everyone's regular and DOT damage. Asta herself can apply her own DOT effect as well via her basic attack. Sampo will be a key teammate in such teams, and more so when Kafka releases. In mono fire teams that are either enabled by Silverwolf or are just naturally composed of either three or four fire units, Asta will have extra buffing synergy thanks to her A4 passive, which buffs everyone's fire damage. And if you want to add to that, equip her with Planetary Rendezvous for more fire damage bonus. And that's it for my Asta guide. Let me know in the comments what you think of Asta and if you've been investing in her throughout your journey so far. Although, since she's incredibly rich, shouldn't she be the one investing in us? Anyway, if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care. You heard right. If I don't work hard, I'll have to go back and inherit the family fortune. <sighs>